Welcome to the Education Marketing Leader Podcast with Chris Raposo. If you're looking to dive into the latest industry insights, draw inspiration from education success stories, or just want to sharpen your marketing skills, you're in the right place. Here, we bring you a diverse range of voices from experts and leaders in the field, offering you a unique blend of professional development and practical strategies. Whether you want to understand your audience better, stay updated with the latest tech trends in marketing, or expand your professional network, we've got you covered. So while you're driving on your morning commute or winding down after a busy day, let's explore the dynamic world of education marketing together. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Education Marketing Leader with Chris Raposo. I am your host. Today, I have the pleasure of welcoming Maya Dimishkovich, the Chief Marketing Officer at Carroll Community College. Maya, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Chris. I'm so excited. So this month is the month of April, and we dedicated this month to community colleges because it is community college month, so I'm really pleased to have Maya on the show today. So a little bit of background about Maya. She has an MBA from Rochester Institute of Technology, as well as a doctorate of business administration from Walden University. And she worked in higher ed since 2010. And she is currently serving, like I said, as a CMO of Carl Community College, but she is also the founder of College Crusader. It's a social media solution designed for community colleges. And we're going to talk a little bit about social media today in the episode. But first, Maya, give us a little bit of an introduction about your background and why you chose to serve the community college. Interesting. So I didn't choose community colleges to start with. It's kind of happened. Um, I started my career working for a digital marketing agency. So just like you, I did a lot of website design, um, I worked on search engine optimization, digital marketing, and it was super exciting because that was like 15 years ago when everything was just, you know, kind of starting. Um, and then after working for a web marketing agency for about five years, <clears throat> um, I wanted to see what else is out there. So I got an opportunity to um, apply and work at Nazareth uh, College, which is a four-year traditional college in upstate New York as an assistant director of marketing and communications. And I immediately fell in love with the atmosphere, the higher ed camaraderie, um, and just the feeling of being around students and faculty. And I felt like I was always challenged and learning. And I also felt like the skill set of digital marketing that I have acquired working at an agency was super valuable and very important to um, to that college. And in just six months, I was able to make um, a lot of changes, um, a lot of improvements. Um, we updated the website. I trained PR and social media um, staff on the best practices. We started using text messaging for alumni donations. So I love seeing the results of my work and I felt like I was really contributing. Um, after working there for just six months, my husband got a job in Baltimore. So we decided to move. Um, and I got a different job working as a brand marketing manager for Walden University, which is one of the largest online institutions serving over... 40,000 adult students. And that was a very different experience. We didn't have uh, like a traditional campus. Um, most of our work was distributed. I was working with people uh, across the world, uh, talking on the phone a lot, <clears throat> conference calls. We didn't have Zoom <laughs> back then. So that was a very different experience, but I learned a lot. Um, and I learned what it takes to be an adult student. Um, you know, when you have kids and you have other obligations and you have a job. Um, and that's when I got my doctorate degree because I just wanted to feel what it's like to be an online student. And it gave me um, a very unique perspective and helped me to be a better marketer and how to message to those students what types of services they need, what challenges they go through. So that was very exciting. Um, and then working there for, I don't know, seven years, um, I applied to Carroll Community College and I got a job as um, a senior director of marketing and creative services. And 
I just loved being back on campus. I just loved being back with people uh, and students. And it's just this feeling you get that you are making a difference and uh, you are actually changing people's lives for the better. So um, I just got a LinkedIn notification yesterday that it was my anniversary, eighth year anniversary at Carroll. So that's that's exciting. Congratulations, congratulations, yeah. <laughs> and it's great work. I mean, I uh, I'm a <clears throat> I'm a product of the community college that set me up for success to go to a four year mm -hmm. school, which set me up to make a career change as yeah. an adult learner. So I'm I'm a big fan of community colleges. I thank you for your work, and now I can tie in where that wall in came in that you worked there and then you went back to um, to school there. It's really really cool to do that first that first party research. You're being the the researcher going through it to see actually how it is as, as mm -hmm. an adult learner so you can better serve your prospective students. So good on you there. And we talked about in the pre-interview about some of the passions that you have and some of the challenges and some of the things that are very important these days. And especially with the demographic enrollment cliff coming up, there's one challenge to get students through the door, but the other challenge is to keep them there. And mm -hmm. today's episode, we're going to focus on how social media can help retain students mm -hmm. so to kick it off uh could you share a little bit about how carroll community colleges currently utilizes social media to engage its students mm -hmm. i am a big believer in social media i think it's one of the most impactful cost-effective marketing channels we have at our disposal especially at community colleges where resources might be limited um, and i know not everyone sees it this way <clears throat> especially leadership at many institutions, they just don't see the value and how it may impact the bottom line of their institution. So I'm excited to talk about retention because everyone understands how important it is and how it leads to the uh, financial health of the institution and how important it is. Like we always say, it's more cost. It costs us more to recruit a new student than to keep the current student, right? So I think uh, framing it this way will help people understand how um, social media can impact retention. But um, at Carol, we um, we use social media a lot and we have a very talented digital marketing manager. Her name is Ellie Hunt and she is a big believer like myself in social media. So the last three years, we spent a lot of time adjusting our strategy, figuring out who are we actually talking to on different platforms, how and what type of information we want to get across, who are the people, who are our messengers who are delivering this uh, information to our audiences. So we spent a lot of time building the strategy and figuring out how we can actually scale it. And I think in general, um, when I think about social media at colleges, it's helping us, um, we try to do four things. One is stay visible because if you are visible on social media, it helps you build trust with your audience and it also helps you increase that awareness um, in your community. The second thing we try to do is stay connected to our audiences. And I think that's really important because it allows us to, again, build those relationships and showcase our faculty and staff and humanize the college and show who we are. Um, I think it's also important, and that's what social media helps us to do, is in, keep our audiences informed and stay informed ourselves. So uh, we strive to serve our audience better by disseminating information in a timely manner on the right channels to the right audiences. But we also do a lot of social listening and observing and trying to figure out what is happening and where we can actually add value. And the last thing is engage, which is um, we want to make sure that we are connecting to our audiences, we're collecting feedback, we're building relationships and providing the support they might need at different stages of their journey. And if we do those four things right, I think they will translate into enrollment, retention, uh, stronger employer brand, partnership opportunities. Um, in addition to uh, doing that. We also have several programs that we run at Carroll. The first one is Student Ambassador Program, and I know you recently spoke to um, Abby about how important it is to have uh, social media ambassadors. 
Um, we found it, I like, I don't know how to do it any other way. Like, I think it's so important in every community college should have a student ambassador program. And then the second program we have to help us with our social media efforts is employee impact initiative. And that's where we train our faculty and staff to be brand ambassadors and to build their personal brand online to kind of help disseminate our message and position us as a trusted leader in higher education and in our community. So there's a lot, a lot of things that we do um, and we are seeing great results. I can tell. It's amazing. I can, you just mentioned Abby, and I know that Abby was inspired by you to run start the Student Ambassador Program. So anybody who, ha who doesn't know about Abby, a couple of episodes ago, I had a conversation with her on how she uses the Student Ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know about that, go back to that. But you touched on a lot of things here, and one of the things that stood out to me was to humanize the college. It makes it approachable when you have mm -hmm. students and faculty talking about the everyday life and what's going on on, on campus because let's face it, not everybody thinks they're cut out for college or for university. So to bring that down to a level that they feel like, hey, maybe I can belong there as well is very important for getting people into the door. And then um, another thing that you said about the social listening, in your opinion, when people engage with your content through a social media platform, whether that be X, uh, Instagram or, or Facebook, how important is it for the community college to respond, to engage with them through comments? Of course. I mean, we respond to all the comments, even if it's a negative comment or something that uh, maybe, I don't know, like every comment is important. Um, and we'll learn so much from those um, discussions and dialogues with our audience. Um, and we see how we can be better at something that they might be, you know, mentioning or how we can better support them or feel happy about them being happy <laughs> with what we are providing and what we are doing. I think this, um, I don't know, um, collaboration and engagement is key to social media. And I think many colleges forget it and they just post content and that's it. But in addition to posting, you also need to be engaging with other people's content. You need to be active in your direct messages. Uh, if you're running any display advertising or social media ads, go and see what people are commenting and saying about those ads and respond to them. One thing I do um, for social media ads in particular, <clears throat> when we run any campaigns, I send those links to our program directors um, who might be responsible for those um, areas of the institution. For example, it could be personal enrichment or it could be workforce training, targeting adult students, or it could be credit programs. Mm -hmm. And I want them to see what people are actually saying. And I want them to engage with those audiences because it's not just the college engaging, it's the people at the college that are interacting with our followers and our audience. Yeah, it's crucial to engage. It's a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. Like you said, some colleges, they, they just put out the content and they don't engage. And I think that this is a lost opportunity to build a relationship with prospects, with alumni, with current students. Because if you have some students comment on a particular post, it shows they have an intent there. And if you don't reciprocate that with a response, then it kind of feels like that they're not valued per se that mm -hmm. their time wasn't valued so mm -hmm. it, it's really important to engage with with students or anybody really on your platform when they when they make a comment or when they tag you you know at social mm -hmm. but um so many institutions they're still trying to figure out best practice when it comes to social media i've heard it's for a lot of institutions or companies social media is sort of an afterthought where they throw an intern in there just to keep it running what are some of the most effective ways for Carroll College that you've done to keep students engaged and then retain? Is it through the ambassador program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. And that's something I really like to talk about. And I will share an example <clears throat> um, of one of the campaigns we did a couple of years ago. And that's when I actually spent the time and I gathered the results and I tracked the performance. And since then, we are just implementing those strategies 
throughout. Uh, it's not a standalone campaign. It's an ongoing effort. And when we talk about retention, you know, I believe that retention is um, is a college wide initiative, right? There is no one silver bullet that can help uh, keep the student at the college. It's a total experience from the time they arrive on campus or they apply to the time when they go to different activities, interact with faculty and staff. So it's a much bigger effort, but I think that marketing can be essential in this effort. And social media in particular is one of the um, great channels to use. So in order you know, to kind of go to the strategy, um, I want to talk a little bit about retention first. So since there are a lot of factors that affect retention and the literature signs five, five different factors. <clears throat> so the first one is financial burden. And that's pretty obvious, right? So if students are not able to pay for uh, tuition or textbooks or any educational expenses, the chances of them retaining are really low. The second one is academic challenges. And that usually happens when a student comes to their first class and then maybe they take a couple of weeks of classes and they realize they have a certain gap in knowledge that prevents them from succeeding in class. And that, that's when they don't feel confident, they feel like they're not good enough and they might be leaving the institution. Then the next factor is um, balancing commitments. I mean, that's important for adult students, <laughs> no, um, of course, but in the community college setting, many of our students work full time and they have a lot of obligations and family commitments and children and um, other responsibilities. And if anything happens in their personal life that is traumatic or very serious, the chances are they will choose to take care of their family and not continue with their studies. The next factor is mental health, and that's become more important over the last few years. Uh, but there is a lot of anxiety. There is a lot of worry um, that prevents students from succeeding and um, persisting in college. And then the last one is student assistance resources. Um, many institutions provide um, some level of assistance. And the problem is if students are not aware that they have access to those resources and if they're not leveraging them in a timely manner, then they're not getting the help they need and that's they're not succeeding. So before thinking about what you can do on social media, you need to understand those five factors. And now that you know what they are, you can design campaigns around uh, those five <clears throat> big um, pillars of content or uh, big challenges that they might be facing and develop content and provide it at the right point in time to address those barriers, to help educate them about the resources, to create more awareness about the help that the college provides. So that's kind of the foundation of retention and social media. And um, before I go into the actual campaign with you, do you have any questions about that? <laughs> yeah, I think that it's, uh, it's really great that you set that up that way with the five pillars because so, Number four was mental health and anxiety. But what leads to the anxiety? It's number one, financial burdens. It's number mm -hmm. two, academic challenges and then a balance in the family, right? All right. that, that is out of line. That creates anxiety right there. I mean, we've all mm -hmm. been there in some way or another if we were adult students or even if you're a traditional age student, right? You have certain expectations. If you're a first generation student, there's a lot of ex expectation from the family, you being the first one, you know, they may mm -hmm. financially back you. So you have that 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 pressure to actually execute mm -hmm. and not fail, right? So that creates a lot of anxiety too. But then you came in with the solution, which is the student's assistance, but then you got to figure out how do you communicate that in a way yeah. that reaches the person that actually needs it, right? right. And I think we're going to get into that a little bit more now. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, exactly. So all of this is interconnected <laughs> and a lot of it goes back to education and awareness and giving this information to students at the right time in their journey. So um, what we did to kind of 
test drive this idea that social media can help with retention is um, we decided we're going to use Instagram as our primary channel to launch this campaign because we knew that most of our students are using Instagram. Then we also then we decided, okay, if students, in order for students to retain, they need to be successful in class. And for them to be successful in class, they need to get the help they need from our academic services, and they need to be aware about what we offer. So we decided to create this campaign around academic resource center and the services they offer, which usually includes uh, a writing center, online paper reviews, math and science tutoring. And then we launched this campaign in um, late September. So once students came in, they took a couple of weeks of classes, they felt acclimated, and that's the point when they started to feel that something is missing or they might need help in certain areas. So that's when we started posting content on Instagram um, on a regular basis. So once we knew what the channel is and what the goal of this campaign was, we wanted to understand our target audience better. <clears throat> so what are the challenges that those students are facing specifically with the academic resource services. And it was super interesting and unexpected, but we found that a lot of them felt like academic, only academically challenged students use academic support services. So you need to be really struggling <laughs> to go and ask for help, which of course is not true, right? A lot of successful students want to do even better and they can use resources. The second misconception that we found is asking for help equals a weakness. And that's how students felt like, I'm not good enough. If I'm asking for help, I'm showing weakness. And again, this is not true. It's just, you may feel this way, but it's so important to ask for help. The next one was they didn't realize that not all of our services was in-person only. We also had a lot of online services available to them. So that was an important point for us to educate them about. And then some students uh, thought that they actually had to pay to get help. So those services were an additional cost. They didn't realize it was actually included in their tuition. <clears throat> so knowing those beliefs and those misconceptions, the next thing we knew we had to do is to identify who will be communicating this information to those students. And we knew that students listen to students more than they listen to faculty and staff. So that's when we decided to use our social ambassadors to create this engaging, entertaining, sometimes really funny content for Instagram. And we knew that reels were the most engaging type of content on Instagram that students engaged with. So we did a lot of different reels uh, that addressed those misconceptions and helped um, increase awareness about the services and the benefits of using the center. Um, another thing we did was really leverage stories. I feel like on Instagram, stories is the best way to engage with your students. You can ask them questions, you can do polls, and they actually respond, which is amazing. And that's where you can start this conversation. Um, so we ran this content for about a month. <clears throat> and then I reached out to the director of the academic center. And I was like, you know, I just wanted to check in. How how you doing? Are you seeing the increase in number of students coming in? And she's like, you know what? We are overwhelmed. We cannot handle the demand. It's crazy, but we need more tutors. We cannot accommodate all the students who are coming to get help. She's like, can you please stop what you're doing and instead help us get more tutors? So we did that. So we shifted gears and started promoting the tutoring jobs. Um, but it was pretty amazing to see uh, that it's actually making impact. So once the semester was over, <clears throat> um, I took a look at the results just to see what happened over the last two months. And if we think about the cost for this campaign, it was zero because we used our internal resources and all of the student ambassadors who worked for us that time, they were on a federal work study program, which means their compensation comes from federal budget, not from marketing budget. So it was um, no cost to us as an institution. 
Another thing um, that was exciting to see is the number of students served during this semester by the academic center increased from 25% of enrolled students to 31% of students. So that's a significant increase, 6% <clears throat> difference. Uh, it was one of the busiest and yeah, highest demand semesters ever at our institution. Um, and I also looked at some of the data on social media. So <clears throat> for example, we saw an increase in total number of followers by 8%. Um, our engagement went up by 200%. Accounts reached the first month was almost 200% and then went down to 62%. I also looked at how many people went to the academic um, resource center website, how many of them were unique visitors, how much time they spent on those pages. So kind of collecting as much information to tell the story about this, um, this campaign. Amazing results, definitely well thought out, especially the, the, the part where you debunk some of the myths mm -hmm. that people tell themselves, like asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's like, uh, <laughs> everybody, you know, throughout time, it's usually what people thought that was, but now we're trying to turn a curve on that and the, the corner on it and just make sure mm -hmm. that people actually know, hey, it's a sign of strength if you ask for help. So you communicating that, not as a not as a professor or an adult, but as a as a fellow student that mm -hmm. can see eye to eye. Like, hey, I've been there. You can get through this as well. So it's well thought out. And I like the story when you told me that the that the person in charge of helping these students asked you to actually stop because they need more resources in order to serve that. So that's a, a, it's an amazing, you know, achievement, and it, that shows right there. Because I was going to ask you how you were going to measure the the effect of Yes. Of it, but she, this person came to you and told you, hey, this is what's happening. And you had an increase in 6% of the services used, which is huge too. And that should be communicated because people pay for those services through their tuition and you want to make sure they get the best ROI when they come mm -hmm. on campus. Yeah. And the, the <laughs> going back to results, we didn't stop there because, you know, if I only showed those results to people on campus, they would have, you know what they would have said? Can you guess? Uh, no, tell me. <laughs> they would have said it's a coincidence, right? Oh. <laughs> no clear, there's no clear connection. Like, okay, you got um, a lot of views and you got engagement, but how is it actually related to them using the services? It is just a coincidence. And I wanted to address that and I wanted to really find a way to prove that there is a correlation between what we do on social media and how we communicate to students to how they use the services. So the next thing we did to measure the results is I reached out again to the person in charge of the academic services and I said, do you mind if I send a survey out to all of the students who used your services this semester? <clears throat> and she's like, sure, go for it. So we crafted an email and we sent an invitation to 781 students who used the services. Out of those, 197 responded, which is a 25% response rate, which is really amazing because it's really hard to get students engaged. Um, I think one of the things that helped was everyone who responded and participated in the survey uh, was getting some swag and was entered for a chance to win a gift card to our cafeteria uh, on campus. So that really helped. Um, but some of the questions that we asked those people is, what are the platforms that you are currently using the most? <clears throat> and 79% said they use Instagram, followed by Facebook, which was kind of surprising for students, but 53%, TikTok was 50%, and Twitter was 20 so keep in mind, these are the numbers from two years ago. So if we do the same survey now, it might, might change. And another interesting finding was that 60% of those people who responded followed, social, uh, followed Carol's social media, which is great. So it means they saw the content we posted. So the next thing we asked them was, um, you know, did you actually see posts or any content related to services, academic services? And 82% said yes. 
So that's great. So that's already helping us make this connection. Uh, then the next question we asked was, um, did you find the content posted on the college's social media account um, informative and helpful? And over 90% said yes, only 2% said no. Wow. Uh, the next question was, has the college's social media influenced your decision to utilize academic support services? And over 80% said greatly or slightly. So only 18% said not at all. These are probably A, a students. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Um, and then the next question we asked was, um, to what extent do you believe that college's social media presence has increased your awareness um, about the services we provide? And 47% said greatly, 49% said slightly, and 4% said not, said not at all. So collecting all of this information from students who use the center clearly demonstrates that what we do on social media leads to how they <clears throat> use the services and how they react to the information we provide. So the key takeaway for me is social media works. <laughs> social media has an impact. Yes, sometimes it's hard to prove, but if you are intentional and you know what you're doing, there is a way to measure it. There is a way to show an impact. Absolutely. And having direct questions on a survey that'll give you that information without you having to look and read between the lines, you know, mm -hmm. just knowing where the people hang out on Instagram is so valuable that you can mm -hmm. double down on that. Um, it, it, it's great. And then when it comes to surveys, I like that you that you show that you shared the incentives that you gave for people to actually answer these, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes you send out surveys and you don't give an incentive and your your response rate is very low. So knowing that you gave out swag and an opportunity to win a gift card to the cafeteria is good to know for other higher ed marketers when they're sending out surveys. So that's, that's another very valuable information you send here. Now, I went on Carol's um, website and you, you always look like where do you guys hang out and i know you were on facebook x instagram snapchat and linkedin and youtube what i didn't see was um tiktok are you still on tiktok or did you move away from that we use tiktok we just didn't add it to the website i guess okay okay <laughs> i didn't see it there because there are some colleges that are moving away from tiktok that's mm -hmm. why I, that's why i wanted to know about that um yeah. i would say for for us instagram is still one of the most engaging and impactful channels uh, followed by YouTube that we're still trying to figure out how to develop better. Um, LinkedIn is growing. So we're trying to leverage that a lot more. And then I would say TikTok for us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, I, I, heard, I hear a lot of good things about the YouTube shorts um, from, from other experts in the industry. And then of course, LinkedIn for, adult learners, if you want to try to reach those or the alumni. Now, I, we've talked a lot about the successes of the social media strategies that you had at Carol. Were there any challenges you faced maybe at the beginning when it came to social media, maybe it was adoption and how did you address those? I think the biggest challenge that you will see or find most institutions have is the resources <laughs> that they have internally. Um, to do social media right and to be present on more than one channel is very resource intensive. Um, so how do you leverage what you have in the most effective way to generate the highest amount of high quality content? That's a big challenge for, for many people. Um, so this, this year, for example, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how can we scale our video production content creation specifically for social media. And I think now we have a great process in place. Uh, but before we were struggling, we were like, how, how do people actually do it? It takes a lot of time. Um, and I think the second challenge for social media is um, in, in order to create um, an engaging community on social media, it's important to constantly promote your social media offline. Uh, 
So when new students arrive on campus, <clears throat> Um, it's important to let them know we actually have social media accounts. Here's where you need to go to uh, to follow us. It could be sent to them via email, text messages, flyers, um, I don't know, flyers in the, in the bathroom or whatever to catch their attention or maybe in the cafeteria. So constantly driving new people to your social media accounts. So then you can nurture them. Then you can create those campaigns and... Um, help them stay informed and engaged with the college so it's an ongoing ongoing process <laughs> absolutely is and it takes everybody to even if they're not on the marketing team to maybe give a plug here and there about the social media mm -hmm. accounts that's where, where it's good to have those ambassadors whether they're student ambassadors or faculty ambassadors you know because when mm -hmm. their content's out there they're proud of it and they're most likely going to share that with their peers yeah. Um, and one thing I found is <clears throat> a lot of, you know, especially faculty and staff, they don't realize um, how much time and strategy it takes to create content or to manage social media accounts. So we recently finished um, our was it fifth, uh, fifth training for faculty and staff on how to build their personal brand on LinkedIn. And what we heard from them, they're like, wow, like we didn't realize that you need to think about your audience. You need to create your content pillars. You need to figure out how to present this information. This is a lot more than we expected. And now they have this new appreciation for what we do in the marketing department and they're more prepared to contribute to our efforts to help us grow awareness and um yeah help with retention efforts so that really helped too <laughs> yeah i love that you tr actually train the faculty and staff on how to build their personal brand because it's not just important for the college but it, it's important for their personal growth and then get an inside look into what's going on in marketing as well to get that appreciation. Mm -hmm. But what I really like about it is that you don't just say, hey, post on LinkedIn, just yeah. figure it out. You actually set them up for success so they look like the experts that they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly the foundation of this. We didn't, we want them to feel invested um, and gain, you know, benefit the college, but also find a benefit for themselves. Um, and that's, what drove their participation because they saw that it's a win-win opportunity for both the college and themselves. And that's why they're more engaged and more willing to, to contribute. It a hundred percent is, and I'm fully agree, agreeing to that. Mm -hmm. Now we have a higher ed marketer listening to this episode, wanting to get into social media more to retain current students what mm -hmm. are the top tips for them to get started i think the key is to shift your mindset to realize that social media is a very powerful tool and treat it as such <laughs> don't underestimate the power of social media so that's one um, i would also say that any retention efforts or campaigns that you may want to launch they should not be ran or viewed in isolation this is not something you do once and forget. This is not a standalone campaign. It's really important to invest in your organic social media on a daily basis and kind of build this foundation and keep your audience engaged and informed. So when you plan to share information that you really want them to pay attention to, they are prepared and they're actually paying attention. Uh, because I see a lot of colleges, they might, take what we did, go back, try to implement and would fail because they just don't have this foundation. Um, it would just be another post, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I am a big believer in creating personas. So anytime you create a campaign <clears throat> or explore a new channel, create a persona for your target audience. Who are those people? What are the challenges, misconceptions, barriers? And then design your campaign in a way to address those barriers. Um, who the messenger is, we talked a little bit about that. So understanding who should be delivering a message on which platforms and in what format. Another thing I would say is how you deliver and present information really matters. And I would say that it's even more important than what you say is how you actually say and deliver this information. 
Um, I also believe that boosting uh, and putting some money behind your organic content can help you increase your awareness and reach. Um, and in general, I think people should know that social media works. And I think this example I shared today is a great example. <clears throat> and it works and we can track it. Um, and I think it contributes to the success of our institution and to building stronger communities. Um, and another thing I would say is um, making sure you communicate frequently with different departments on campus. Uh, so if I didn't reach out to the director of academic services, like they would have been overwhelmed even more. Uh, so it's important to, con to keep this information flowing or you might see something on social media related to FAFSA or financial aid that people are complaining they have questions about, you can go to a financial aid director and say, hey, can you help us create content to address those challenges? So it should be um, a collaborative effort across the whole institution. Um, but yeah, do it. do it. Use social media, <laughs> track it, prove to your uh, leadership that it actually has an impact, and then maybe you can get more resources behind it. That's right. And don't operate in silos. That's a beautiful episode. Maya, I really appreciate you being on the show today. You you outlined how to be successful with social media and how to show the returns on the investment properly to stakeholders so you get the funding behind it as well. So well done on today's episode, Maya. How can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about you or connect with you? Yeah, um, I use LinkedIn a lot the last few years. So yeah, you can uh, follow me on LinkedIn. I, and I try to share a lot of valuable content, something of um, something to connect with and maybe take some practices back to your institution. <clears throat> and I'm happy to share additional resources uh, related to social media. So feel free to direct message me and I'll send you something up of value. Very good. Well, I really appreciate you being part of the show today. It was a super insightful show. So Maya, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, thanks so much for tuning into the show today. If you enjoyed it, don't keep it to yourself. Share with your friends in your network. And if you have a moment, I would really appreciate a review of the podcast that'll help other people find the show as well. Tune in every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. when I release another episode. Take care now. Have a good one, friends.